So in this video guys, I'm going to show you exactly one simple trick of how you can make a super old camera. Yes, I'm bringing back my Nikon D5200 right here. I'm going to show you how you add a headphone jack to it, how you can see better when you record so you can get better focus, and how you can overall improve your video recording capabilities all within your Nikon camera. Stay tuned in this video. So it doesn't matter what camera you have, one of the most specific things that you need as a videographer or a video editor is getting yourself an external monitor. Because the reality is, if you get yourself an Nikon D5200, yes, you have this lovely looking LCD screen, right? But there's things like maybe you're outdoors, it's way too sunny. You can't see whether or not your subject is in focus. And on top of that, you can't really monitor your audio on these videos, or can you? And all of that can be simply solved by picking yourself a external monitor like I have right here. And you can have a little setup with any of your entry level or even your Nikon Z50 with an external monitor setup so you can have a better video recording experience, checking whether or not you're in focus and getting real output comparison to your little LCD screen. Size does matter in this case. So what you'll need, I'll simply jump over to my desk here, I'll show you a live demo of how it will look, but what you'll need is HDMI, depending on your camera, HDMI to a, this is a mini HDMI port, but for the Nikon Z50, which I don't have, is actual a micro HDMI. This is just a mini. Or might be the other way around, right? That's what you'll need. As well as you will need an external monitor. This right here is the Notorious Small HD. It is an external monitor that I actually recommend to my clients and this is actually from work. But Small HD is the monitor that I go with, but there are other budget options that I will link in description below, whether it's newer or a bunch of others that go around for $150 plus. And uh, they're all pretty much work the same, but be aware for the budget ones. That's why I stick with Small HD. I'm not sponsored, but this is the one that I'll be using, as well as depending with these types of, as you can see, these monitors, they usually have some generic battery. For this one, you can use your Canons, but it also, the standard is the Sony NPF batteries that goes with these guys. So enough yapping, let's show you guys how exactly you set this up straight into your camera. Super simple setup. And once you get the setup on your more elaborate shoots, whether you're doing an interview or some sort of like short film, an external monitor is much more recommended if you are more of a sit down type of video in comparison to a running gun, but you could technically hook this up to like a little small rig setup or have this on a gimbal with an arm, but yeah, we're not gonna get too technical, but let's get into exactly how you get make this little guy into more of a bigger guy. So I guess one of the biggest secrets, not necessarily secrets, but take any camera, chances are it has a external HDMI output. And as you can see right here, you have your mic, AV out, that's how you know old this camera is, <laughs> as well as that's for the GPS, correct me if I'm wrong, but here is your HDMI output. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna be grabbing this guy, your mini HDMI, plugging that right here, right? Next is you wanna grab this, and this will go straight into your external monitor. So for this case, this is the small HD, and as you can see, you wanna put it into the HDMI in, right? Not out, but in. Making sure that both your batteries are plugged in. And now, all you simply do, hold this on, and your HD monitor should now turn on. So here it is connected and you're like, what's going on? I don't see anything. Make sure your camera is turned on, all right? Now that your camera is on, 
you can see I have an entire reverse LCD screen right here, right in my hands. And yes, flick into live view, I can see exactly what is on my screen. I just gotta fix this. There is a slight delay, hence is why it's like, depending on what monitors you guys get, if you go for budget, yes, it acts as an external monitor, but you may have latency. It also depends on the wire as well. So now, as you can see, whatever that I'm doing live, right, focus, is replicated exactly on the monitor, which is why I'm using an external monitor is so beneficial when it comes to using your video recordings. But wait, there's more guys. <laughs> so when you're actually looking at this guy and the small monitor, all you gotta do is you look right here, right here, and there is a little headphone jack. 3.5, any standard 3.5 millimeter jack, plug that in, click, you grab your headphones, and now, I'm listening to exactly what is being monitored or going to be recorded on my Nikon D5200. Yes, D5200, I'm listening to the audio from it. This is a workaround. And uh, the whole benefit is that is you can monitor your audio now all through your Nikon D5200. Because if you don't know, HDMI carries two channels, as the video channel as well as audio. Hence why you can have the audio and video i'll put it right into your little screen which is why you see on big movie sets or this kind of looks ridiculous but you'll see on movie sets where a bunch of people are standing behind and they're like they're not even at the camera but they're their director what they're doing is they're looking at the monitor to see whether or not what the cinematographer is doing and how they like to angle and frame their shots all through an external monitor so like i said it's a great way to see and see how you're filming as well as a hack that if you haven't known about it yet, here's your chance to pick it up and see whether or not it's for you. It's a great beneficial thing when it comes to if you are doing corporate style videos and you don't have the best eyesight or you want to get a little closer, you want a zebra, you want to see if you're focused or you're peaking or not highly recommend yourself getting an external monitor but yeah and that guys was how you make your nikon your little nikon guy your d5200 100 into a little bit more ca capable in terms of a video recording now you can see exactly what you're recording whether or not it's in focus you can see you can have your peaking your zebra depending on your external monitor as well as hey you can actually monitor your audio now right all from a little DSLR. So like I said, link is description to everything that I used in the description below, as well as yes, there are budget monitors, but do be wary of the ones that you do use because then you might not have the proper color output display and all that stuff. So the ones that I recommend, link is description, check it out. But if you're a videographer and you wanna take your videos to the next level, take it more seriously, Link in description to check out all the gear that I mentioned, as well as my camera resources, my freelancing guide, all that ish is in the comments below. My name is Peter, you're watching a Broke Visionary Collective. If you watched this far, why haven't you given this video a thumbs up? Hit that notification bell and leave a comment below to see what type of videos you wanna see next. There's gonna be a little bit of a different tone of how I present myself, as well as the overall Broke Visionary Collective vision. What is that, right? My name is Peter, you're watching BVC, CO. We all start with nothing, but you can always create something.